Hey everyone, I want to show you how you can simulate dice rolls in MATLAB. I've got a basic dice rolling game here, and we're going to compute the probability of the outcomes. With player A, he's going to win if at least one number one is rolled in six dice rolls, and then player B will win if at least two number ones are rolled in 12 dice rolls. The question is, would you rather be player A or player B? Because which one wins more often? We're going to take a look at player A and then just generalize the outcome for player B. But you'll know that the first thing we need to do is generate a random dice roll. And we're going to use the randy function for this. If we do randy six, we'll get an integer output for numbers between one and this argument. 1 and 6. That's great, but we need to do 6 rolls here. So we can do for that is add an argument of 6. That'll give us a 6 by 6 matrix. I think if we do 1 by 6 here, there, we'll get 6 rolls. Now we're going to want to do this a bunch of times because we don't just want to do one roll for our program. We'll want our program to generate a bunch of simulated events happening, so many times rolling six dice. Let's create a variable called n. We'll do it a thousand times. So we'll roll six times a thousand times. So we want this times a thousand. To do that, I'm going to add n right here. Cool. Now here we have a thousand sets of six rolls. We could also do this the other direction, change this to six, change this to n, and now the matrix is just really long. And if we look at our variable, the vertical columns are now all six rolls here. And we have a thousand of these as we go across. I'm actually going to keep this method because MATLAB has built-in functions that act on vertical columns. Just looking at this, you can see that column two here would win because we have at least one one. Column seven would win, column five would win. So you can see, well, looks to be just from this initial viewing, column nine would win, column 11, maybe a little over 50%. Let's keep that in mind as we proceed. Now, what do we wanna do? We've got this random matrix. We wanna save this. Let's call it results, the results of our roles. So we have this huge results matrix. Now we want to check if there's going to be a one. So let's just convert all of these values into either a zero or a one. We'll want the ones to be ones and anything not a one to be zero. What we can do, if we say results is equal to one, it'll do a logic check. And now we'll get each of these columns, ones where there were ones and zeros where there were not ones. This first column here would win. The second column would be a lose because we have no ones. I wanna save this into check ones and now we have a matrix check ones that holds these results if they're equal to one. From here, let's take a sum of the total number of ones in each column. So if I do sum of check ones and run that, let's see what we get. We're just gonna end up with a one by a thousand double here. And this just tells us the total number of ones that were in each of those columns. That means we had one, one here, one here, none here. Let's scroll to the right a bit more, see if we have, this round had two ones, this round had two ones, this round had three ones, my goodness. Okay, we can use that now to declare the winners. Let's call this matrix, we'll need to save it. Let's call it um, the number of ones because it gives us the number of ones out. And then let's go through this and count the number of times we get at least one here. So basically if we did num ones greater than 
or equal to one, that would give us our winning hands. Whoop, sorry, num ones here. That was all, just had to add a space right there. So now we have everything ones, so these are all the winning hands. So let me actually call this now, I guess that's technically the winning sets, right? If you think of the, the sets of roles that win. So we have the winning sets, and then if we count those number of winning sets, we could just sum, oh, let me fix my typo here, winning sets, we'll get one final answer of how many of our n, which is a thousand rolls of six dice, come out with a winning set. We can then get our actual probability. Probability, let's just call it of A win, which is the one in six. Looking for one, one in six rolls. That's gonna equal the sum of winning sets divided by the total number of sets that we rolled. If we run that, here we are. Probability that A wins for the one in six is about 0.687. We can run this a few times and we'll see that we're kind of all over the place, but with you know some certainty, if I add a couple more rolls here, we're looking to be around six, six, five something. Now the question is, how do we do this for player B? It's really simple. I'm just gonna copy this code, bring it down here. Player B wins if at least two number ones are rolled. So when we're checking on the winning sets, we need to increase this to two. I'm also gonna rename all these variables to B so that we keep the A and the Bs separate. And then this probability is gonna be two in 12. We have to roll 12 die, still rolling from one to six, but we're gonna roll 12 die here And we'll do that n times. So now if we roll this one, this is gonna be prob b, we get the two numbers. So here's probability of a winning, and here's the probability of b winning. So b is a little bit less, interestingly enough. We can run this a few more times to get some more values. And probability b comes out just a little bit less than probability of a every time. Hope you've enjoyed this video. It's kind of an interesting problem to solve, but using vectors, it's really easy to do this in MATLAB. And it's also really cheap to compute. If we do a little tick and talk action here to check how long this takes to run, we're running in six hundredths of a second. Super cheap computing time, super fast and super easy. Hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.